Also on the way, shut down by hackers. We're going to talk to a security expert about the attack launched against the Boston Police website. Boston Police hope to have their website's blog back online later today. It's been down since Friday after a group called Anonymous took, crediting, uh, took credit for the hacking that happened last week. The group says they did it in retaliation for the way that BPD treated occupiers. Joining us now from our Beacon Hill studio with some insight is Robert Siciliano, McAfee consultant and identity theft expert. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. All right, let's talk about this, because you hear about stuff like this happening, but maybe not when it comes to a group like a law enforcement group. How does something like this happen to an organization like BPD? Well, this is uh, hacktivism at its finest. These are uh, uh, rogue, renegade hackers. These are ego hacks. Okay. <clears throat> and they look for vulnerabilities in these websites to make a statement. And here they made a statement about um, Occupy Boston. Right. Uh, more so, this is an annoyance than anything else. There hasn't been any actual uh, data leakage that would compromise identities, but uh, it does, um, you know, defacing the Boston Police Department doesn't make them look good either. Sure, no, it doesn't. Uh, you know, without giving anyone, anyone any ideas out there, how easy is something like this to do? Well, unfortunately, most websites have some form of vulnerability or the other. Uh, it's not easy, but it certainly can be done with the right tools of technology. Okay, well, and this is probably what a lot of folks are thinking. Manino said this Friday, uh, and it's really probably the concern of a lot of folks out there might have after hearing this. He said if they could hack that, what else could they hack? Is that a concern? Certainly. Uh, the capabilities of these um, uh, uh, unethical criminal hackers is, uh, goes far beyond just ego hacks and defacing public websites. Uh, many times they have uh, uh, compromised big, huge databases, downloaded millions millions of credit card numbers, uh, personal identifying information, compromise identities, even got intellectual property. Uh, hacking is at its epidemic proportions at this point. We are certainly in the year of the hacker and the hacktivist, and uh, both uh, public and uh, private enterprises need to batten down the hatches. Well, and it's not just putting, you know, BPD at risk necessarily, but any of the consumers, so to speak, of their websites. So in a sense, it's not just an attack on them, but attack on any of us who might be using the website. Is that true? Without a doubt. Some of these websites, even the public-facing uh, BPD, in some cases they may have, may have tip lines where uh, right. consumers might enter their personal information, names, phone numbers, email addresses, and so forth. And when that information is compromised, then it can actually affect the public in that way. In this specific incident, though, any folks out there be at risk because this was hacked? Well, you know, ultimately, um, uh, I'm not sure if it has been disclosed whether or not the public's information in this particular breach has been right. uh, compromised. I know in other public-facing websites for, with other law enforcement across the country, it has. Uh, ultimately, if you have made a tip, I would contact the Boston, public, uh, Boston Police Department and find that out if, in fact, your information may have been compromised. Let me ask you this, because, you know, obviously we're talking about this here because it happened here, but, but how big of a problem is this, not only locally, but, but on a federal level? Well, there have been uh, many, um, you know, federal government websites that have been compromised as well in many different ways. Right. Uh, and you have IT professionals working for government and private industry that have been gearing up for quite some time now. They do have systems in place to protect themselves, but there is no such thing as 100% security. There's always going to be some way, some form of getting in. Uh, the idea is to reduce the damage and so that, um, again, identities aren't compromised or it results right. in some type of uh, damage to our critical infrastructure. All right, so what's your recommendation at this point for folks who might be worried about something like this happening to their site or to their information? Well, ultimately, you want to have what's called ethical hackers that uh, will work towards uh, breaking into your own sites look for, looking for those vulnerabilities. If they can find those vulnerabilities, chances are the bad guys can. So you have security professionals looking at your sites, locking them down, mm -hmm. and doing things like updating and changing usernames and passwords and uh, updating your antivirus and malware protection, anti-spyware, anti-phishing, and so forth. All right, Robert Siciliano, thanks for being with us at our Beacon Hill studio. Thank you.